to Avian. When we travel back on that rebel bus, smoke sometimes, arrogant sometimes, belly humorous poet, you were jovial. And you graciously avoided the impertinent approval of the lines I felt I could proffer back to you. You, chuffed with the few bob from the reading, were set on getting back to ye crack before closing. And I continued until I left the bus and patronised with the serene security of yet another sixth former, your part in establishing the Ginsburg acclaimed world centre, our city's scene. I had too quickly recovered from your earlier opening announcement, the death of John Coltrane. Few, if any, in that youthful Crosby audience had even heard of your revered saxman. Your angel to whom you had dedicated our evening celebration of Liverpool, the present and the future of verse, again the city of the moment. The words you had used to describe the notes he'd planted in your brain chilled more than the poetry. We, true patriots of our city's sentimentality, would ride again. Not many weeks later, I responded to the unnecessary invitation I had sought, and I took my place to read from the floor at O'Connor's. I was pleased to have to turn and glower smugly. You, distracting, chatting when those girls and you ignored the evening's supposed point. It was an instant I knew I could and would booze out on, only having shown up a proselytizer of poetry, a plonker concerned with recognitions, not writing's fruits. The collapse of your beer-battered life, the insulting stroke, the perishing liver, all were unknown to me when I shook at the news of your death. Lost to me were a hero, an era, and the chances that sweet people had made. Freeman, painter, poet, your glorious topicality, Adrian, warmed much more than the gentle words that had shared the howls of a saxophone precipitated young ladies. <laughs>